Gio Urshela, what is it? Gio Urshela, the most happy fella. I like it. Oh, the most happy fella in the old Napa Valley. Well, it's a show, Broadway show. Swung on and driven a deep right. It is high. It is far. It is gone. Oh, that is a Stantonian home run to deep right center. John Carlo. No si posto Carlo. Let the Guardy party begin. Brett Gardner plants one in the right field seats. It's an A-bomb from A-Rod. For Robbie Cano. Now don't you know? He sends a text message. Oh, you're on the mark, the sheriff. El Capitan. Nick Swisher is absolutely Swisher-licious. It is Glaber Day. Oh, like a good Glaber. Torres is there. Judging blast. All rise. Here comes the judge. Case closed. We could have just played that for the entire hour. That would have been great. John Sterling, that is part of the body of 31 years of work as the Yankees radio voice. He goes into his 32nd year. You look at the rest of the resume. He was with the Braves, did basketball both in Atlanta and in New Jersey and New York. But, John, I've got to ask you because everybody wants to know. When you start the process, because I know you're a method actor. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but when you start the process of, let's say, a Gio Urshela, for example, do you lock yourself in a room or to come up with the call, or do you allow input from others? Well, I think all of them, all the above, as they say. Um, some people give me home run calls. Um, some I reject. Uh, some just come to me while I'm doing the game. That's... I'm very lucky about that. Now, others, the, when they got Giancarlo, I had to think. I went to the to Berlitz, and I asked this wonderful gal, Linda Merlot, give me a phrase in Italian, something like Ronzoni sono buoni from my youth. Mm -hmm. And um, in a couple of days, she came up with uh, Giancarlo. Non si può sto palo. <laughs> you can't be stopped, you know. A lot of people didn't like it, so be Caldera. Gave me non de car, that ball should travel far. That's a good one, John Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> Silly, isn't it? But it, you know, it's fun and it, it's work. It may be nonsensical, but it's it's work. Um, uh, probably the, my two favorites uh, came to me while they're rounding the bases. Well, three, as a matter of fact. Uh, Robbie Cano, don't you know? An A bomb from A Rod. And in, in Detroit, Austin Romine had a home run, and I had, I had nothing to say. There's so many guys on the team named Austin. <laughs> so <laughs> right. so um, as he rounded the bases, I said, Romy, my homie. <laughs> <laughs> and we were leaving that day, and um, you know how they say, if you go to a restaurant and you're near the, the bathroom or the kitchen, you have a bad table? Well, on the plane, I sit next to both. <laughs> so so, <laughs> near Meredith. And so Roman came by and he came over to me. Now, he's playing the game. How did he hear it? Well, people tell him. Right. And he said to me, I love the home run call. So I thought, oh, great, That's great. great. So you never know with John whether he'll break out Meredith in another language or maybe a show tune he'll just throw in there. You, you never, never do know. know. And that is what everybody wants to know. What was the home run call? Please go get it for me. So I have... Some of my reports are actually about you, John, because they want to know what the home run call is on the radio. But I'd be curious. You mentioned the Giancarlo one. I know there was a lot of controversy right. surrounding that one. Do you take it personally if people don't like the home run call, or do you consider changing it if it doesn't go over the way you thought it well, might? Well, I think of things changing it, but uh, I don't get hurt by it at all. No. You know, I have very strong likes and dislikes myself, and so the, the likes I embrace, I love music and sports since I've been seven years old. And the rest of the world, I just, I can't, it's my defense mechanism. I ignore it totally, so. Well, no. don't block out our studio audience, so they love you. Yeah, yeah. And I love them. Um, one guy came to me and didn't like it. I'll give you that quick story. Nick Swisher, <laughs> when he came to the Yankees and he hit a home run, I said, he's jolly old St. Nick. And he came to me and said, it makes me sound like I'm an old fat man. So that's, that's why I switched to Swish Alyssus. It's tough to say. John, I wanted to ask you about, and I'm glad you brought up music, your love for music. Bernie Williams, one of the old-time center fielders 
When I heard you make some calls for Bernie, it seemed like he was one of your favorite players because you right. got so excited. Well, now you know all this. He's the loveliest gentleman you'll ever meet. And that's how it began with the Yankees. I had done things on riffs on names. Dominique is magnifique when I did the Hawks. But um, Bernie was the first one with the Yankees. Uh, burn, baby, burn. And, and Bernie goes boom, and he loved it. He really loved it. So. We take a step away from all the uh, home run calls. You spend a lot of time around the players, the coaches, and the managers. All your years, your decades of an announcer, is there one person who you would say, we had a bond, we had a friendship that stands out higher than anyone else? Well, several. Um, one is the guy you wrote the book with. Uh, great book. You have to read Jack Curry's book with David Cohn. Um, obviously, Joe Torrey. That was a great thing for me when the Yankees made him manager. We were friends from Atlanta because he managed the Braves and um, another Braves player came to the Yankees who you might not remember because it's the early 90s early 90s is so far away <laughs> and and that was Dion James so we were really good friends were you surprised ever that you know you've seen so many collections of teams and characters and rosters that you thought two guys that would never hang out together or get along and they were just like peas and carrots that I can't remember you know who people, was a big personality for you on some of those teams though well Mattingly was the yeah. first and um, he's the, again terrific guy heck of a manager he just doesn't have a team and he doesn't play anymore you have to have a team and um, in my first year 1989 um, I go down to the clubhouse after the games and I would join a lot of, lot of players standing on a line to get Mattingly's autograph and he was He's a very uh, lovely human being, and he, he was able to take it very well.